good to see y'all. They keep coming in, so that's good. Better late than never, right? So, I hear the little ones in the nursery, so. Is Caleb watching the nursery? I mean, Levi? Okay, Levi's in the nursery. He's been there a long time. Wednesday's a little red right from there. All right, if you have your uh, Bibles, I trust that you do. I want to talk to you about the importance of the blood. I don't know when it's the last time if you've ever heard a message on the blood. And of course, we're talking about the blood of Christ. And as we think in those terms of that message, I trust that it, it'll help you as we just tell you a few things about um, blood and what blood means. Without the, the Bible says clearly that there's life is in the blood. But in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, we find uh, a verse that makes it very clear that we have to have the blood applied in our lives. And so again, I know some people go, what? Blood? Uh, are you seriously talking about that? A blood sacrifice in, in this modern world today? And yes, I am. And I trust that as you listen to us, it become quite clear what you need to do uh, concerning the blood of Christ. But it says here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved? And I want to emphasize that God wants everybody to be saved. Amen. And folks, I trust that you are praying for our president and our vice president and the speaker of the house and others that they would get saved. And I think how fantastic. And, and God does it. And I've shared the story with you about Nebuchadnezzar, who was a world, uh, he was a world terror in one sense, but he was a world uh, ruler. And how he got saved, how he got converted, how he got a new heart. And it just totally changed. And I mean, it's exciting. Uh, when you see how God works among leadership. And so again, uh, we have not because we asked not. But wouldn't that be fantastic for them to get saved and they're going to be totally turned around? Amen. And that can happen. And yet we see it as a sign of the last days also. But there's nothing saying that we can't have a revival just before the last days. So again, who will have all men to be saved? Let me put it this way. It's God's will that they get saved. Amen. Isn't that fantastic? that he loves everyone so much that he died for everyone, even knowing those that would refuse to accept him. Then he says, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> Boy, that would be a revival in, in politics if, if suddenly they all came to the truth and accepted what God says over what man says. For there is one God, and that's very clear, one God, folks. Uh, there's not only multiple gods, and it's sad that in our country, uh, they get involved in worship and so many things that are not God or of God in any way, shape, or form. And he says, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm so linked for that mediator. Uh, that he stands like my lawyer, if you please, and he's never lost a case and never will. And he stands before me and, and God Almighty, if you please, before the judge of all judges. And because of what Jesus did, I mean, my lawyer took my place. <laughs> Wow, so that I can go to heaven. And so I'm so thankful for that mediator, Christ Jesus, the Son of God. And verse 6 says, Who gave himself a ransom for all. Again, it wasn't just for white people. It wasn't just for black people. It wasn't just for brown people. It wasn't just for green people. It wasn't just for mixed people. <laughs> it was for all. Man, I mean, there's twice in that little few sections that Jesus died for everyone. Folks, I'm so thankful that we have a loving God. And he hasn't, in one sense, we are God's chosen people because we've accepted his plan. But again, God has chosen for all of us to be saved, for all of us to know him as our Savior. He said, himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And folks, I'm looking forward to that due time. That's talking about us being in heaven. And I'm looking forward to being with all my loved ones that have gone before me. But looking forward to meeting Jesus face to face. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, isn't that unbelievable? But again, our God is so infinite that there's so many things that are totally beyond our comprehension because we have a hard time just with the finite things, the things that we can see, the things that we can know here. We have a hard time understanding just those things. And uh, again, uh, what a great God we have. Ephesians 1 7 says it this way. And Ephesians 1 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. Right. Okay. Referring again to Jesus. The forgiveness of sins, 
according to the riches of his grace. Wow. To be totally forgiven of all of my sins. Isn't that amazing? To think that all the sin that is uh, in this room, when I say it, all of us have sinned, but if you would put all our sin together, it, it would be just staggering how much sin. Uh, as I was giving our study this today, as we were studying the brain somewhat, studying the mind, that the mind on an average day makes 10,000 processes that go through in a day's time. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know about you, but that's pretty staggering. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get sidetracked, and it's so easy for the world to pull us off. But, and, and folks, we have a sin nature. I'm so grateful that I've been saved, but I still have to deal with that sin nature. So, again, uh, I'm so grateful for His grace and His mercy. And then in Hebrews 9, 12, again, it says this, Neither by the blood of goats are calves, or and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Jesus gave it all. Sometimes uh, we, we refer to that, and maybe it's referred to this somewhat, but they said, man, this is going to take some blood and sweat on your part. And it re referred to, it's going to take everything that you got to accomplish this particular goal. It's nothing, maybe it was a coach talking to you and for you to get down to a, a, you know, to a three and a half minute mile run, you got to do this, you got to do that. And anyhow, nobody's done it yet. But anyhow, what I'm saying, that's, that's just staggering. And once we have all these things, and so we refer to that blood and sweat. And folks, that's literally what Jesus gave. In fact, it even tells us that when he was in the garden, that his sweat became his drops of blood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's amazing. But there we find right here in the scripture that he was willing to become like a lamb, even though he was the savior of the whole world, even though he's king of kings and lord of lords. He was willing to humble himself, not only to become a baby, to become a child, to be born through the womb, but to become like a, a lamb, the lamb of God. Amen. Wow. First Peter 1.18. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold and from vain conversations received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days, our last times, for you. And again, that's another thing I didn't think about, but he didn't come die just for the wealthy people. <laughs> he didn't just come die for those that could pay the way into heaven. Amen. And folks, nobody could ever pay the way into heaven. I mean, how ridiculous to think, well, I'll give the church a million dollars. Uh, we can't buy our way there. None of our works would ever be good enough. Jesus has done it all. And Jesus, who had all the gold and silver to please of, of the universe, gave his all when he literally gave his blood to save you from your sin. So what an amazing thought as we think of what Christ has done for us. So again, when I, I think of what Christ has done for us, uh, I, without the blood, there is no remission. And so right now, before we go to the Father, we'll ask God's blessing upon our services today. And I'd like to ask Brother Jim if you would to pray for us as we preach. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we ask that you'd open our hearts and our understanding that we would hear from you today. We would hear from, Lord, how to make our lives better, how to, that we can be used of you, Lord, to see other souls get saved because it is about souls, Lord, and we love you. If there be anybody here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, we pray today would be the day of their salvation. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. This is uh, Crystal's father. Yes. So we're so glad to have him here in the services. All right, as we continue, without the blood, there is no remissions. And, and folks, this deals with our past sins, if you please. And I, I want you to realize this, and it just kind of hit me as I was studying this last night, uh, that Jesus actually died for all the sins of the whole world, and he really, he's forgiven all the sins of the world, and, and stick with me, but so many have not asked for that forgiveness. Amen. 
And so they're stopped in their sins, even though Jesus has already paid for their sins and has already forgiven them once, they have to accept that forgiveness for us before it's completed. If they don't accept that forgiveness, there's no hope for them. And it's their choice. And again, it's exciting how many times we've heard testimonies of people being saved that didn't have any type of witness in their area, but because they wanted to know the truth, God showed them the truth, and he will do that. Those that truly want to be saved, those that want to know how, what, what's necessary to know how to go to heaven, God will reveal that to them. And we've seen that so many times, and uh, so many of our missionaries can share stories of God's intervention among those that they were working with so that they saw the need of Christ. So again, without blood, there is no remission. And so Jesus gave it all for us. So my sins are forgiven, according to Hebrews 9.22, which uh, we used that earlier. Uh, and, and again, in Hebrews 9.22, uh, we see how that Jesus was willing to give his all for us so that we could have that wonderful eternal life. And again, as we look in the scriptures, there's several other things I want to share with you. And uh, as we look here, we see that my sins were also forgotten. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience. I'm thankful that my wife's not this way because uh, there's so many lines that, you know, I, I'm just thankful that she's kind of forgotten. She don't bring it back up. But sometimes the wife has a tendency to say, honey, you remember when you did such and such or you did this or that or whatever? And, and they have a way of reminding us of something that we did in the past that, you know, and, and then your first response is, man, is, but, but you forgave me. But I'm sorry, I just can't forget it, <laughs> you know? And, and I'm so glad that God, even though he knows all things, has complete knowledge, perfect knowledge, He's willing to forget Amen. as he forgives. Isn't it great that I want to worry about when I get to heaven, God said, Jerry, remember when you did it? <laughs> remember when you said, remember? Wow. You make it because he has a perfect memory, but he's gone ahead and chosen to forget all those things. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17, it says, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Folks, God said it. Not a politician. God said it. Amen that he'll remember them no more. I think of some of the scary teachings that they got going on in our public schools, like uh, uh, the, uh, the cri uh, race crisis, uh, uh, the theory, the critical race theory, yeah. things like that that are being taught uh, and not going to the truth. I mean, it's just unbelievable things that are being shared. And again, basically it's come back to, you can't forget what happened and how you got here. And folks, we shouldn't forget what happened, but we need to hear the rest of the story too. What happened, and then look back and wow, look at where we're at now today. Look at the things that are happening and how God has blessed us in spite of our beginnings. How God has done so many wonderful things for us. But my sins are also gone forever. I won't have to worry about ever being affected by some habitual sin that haunted me uh, while I was here on this earth that will never come again to haunt me. John 129, again, I love the word. But the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now, John the Baptist was the son of a, of a priest of the Jewish faith. And if anybody would have been prejudiced, I think he would have been prejudiced and would have said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of Israel. <laughs> Which he could have said that because that was true. But he went ahead and because of God, God gave him this commandment, away the sin of the world, the whole world, not just one particular group. Wow, I'm so thankful that Jesus was willing to do that. God humbled himself. He that was the creator of all things became his own creation. Wow, how staggering. Uh, what I think all things we We've been exposed to babies a whole lot here in recent years mm -hmm. uh, with all the uh, two babies being born in our home in the space of, what, two years, I guess, two and a half years or less. Uh, and so, you know, they make a lot of messes. <laughs> I mean, they really do. And uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know how else to put it because they're so cute. And I know why they came up the term. He's that cute little stinker. <laughs> 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 Maybe you need to emphasize the last part more. He's a stinker, you know. And uh, anyhow, it just amazes me. And then how long can that be from such a cutie, you know? But, but, but it happens. But what I'm saying, 
Jesus went through all of those things because he loves you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that staggering? That he was willing to take upon the frailty of flesh upon himself. In Psalms 103, verse 12, it says this again concerning what the blood has done for us. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Wow. Do you realize that if I were to go east and just kept going east, that I'd eventually end right back here again? And I would never be going west, just always east. And if I just chose to go west, I'd always be going west. Amen. But yet if I chose to go north, eventually I'd be going south. <laughs> and uh, we were kind of a little bit confused the first time we flew to Vanuatu too, because the, the person that bought our ticket sent us into Ontario and Toronto and so forth. And, we thought, uh, we thought for a moment that the flight was taking place. We thought they were going to fly us all the way across the, uh, you know, the pole, and then come up the South Pole into uh, new, into Vanuatu. And but anyhow, they, they flew us up north, and then finally flew us south all the way uh, from Toronto to Sydney. It was uh, 17 hours of the flight. Anyhow, that's a long flight. But but what am I trying to say? Uh, you can only go so far north or south and you're going the other direction again. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this, God said, wow, there's never a place, never a place where our sin will come up again. Mm -hmm. It's totally buried from us. Isaiah 38, 17 says it this way, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it to me from the pit of corruption. For thou hast called all my sins behind thy back. Wow, isn't that great? Uh, isn't that exciting when you think of what God has done for you, for us, through his blood? So all these, again, a lot of these Old Testament things were all pointing, it shows very clearly that all the sacrifices, the sacrifices of the lambs, of the, of the calves, of the goats, and so forth, all these things were to point to Jesus, God, who would come and be the supreme sacrifice for all. Without the blood, there's no reconciliation. And that deals with our peace because God created us and then we kind of went our own way. I mean, in the very beginning, we looked at Adam and what he did and how it completely turned us back upon God and listened to Satan and how terrible. But as a result, when we turned our backs upon God, we turned from peace and there became unrest within us. And we can't have peace until we've been reconciled with the Creator, with God again. So Colossians 1.20, it tells us here again in verse uh, through 22, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. You ready, folks? You and I would be perfect. Can you imagine that? Uh, any of you ever lived in a perfect neighborhood? So I never have. I, I know some people, and, and Richard can tell you about it. He has a good neighbor. And Brother Chuck Swanson used to have a really good neighbors where he was living at. And others can tell you, you know, having some good neighbors, I mean, that's just great. I think uh, Bob and Don have, have had some good neighbors. That's great. But we could all say we've never had perfect neighbors. And in heaven, we'll have perfect neighbors. <laughs> And you ready? We'll have a perfect supreme ruler. Wow. And, and we're talking about, I mean, we'll have perfect servants. Can you imagine that? <laughs> we'll have perfect thoughts. We'll have, and everything will be totally, totally perfect. Isn't that hard to believe? I, I mean, if you know yourself, you know how imperfect you are. <laughs> if you don't, ask your wife. <laughs> okay. But what I'm trying to say, folks, that. We're all sinners. And, and thank the Lord that there's so many of us that are, are sinners saved by grace. And that's the only way we can ever get to heaven. But I, I love what he says here, that through his death, to present you holy and unblameable. When I present it, it's going to be just like Jesus' son, what he did for us. God sees Jesus when he sees us. He sees the blood that covers us from all of our unrighteousness. Uh, it's amazing what God has done for us. And then he says, unblameable 
unreprovable in his sight. I don't know about you, but do you like being reproved? You, you like somebody coming and saying, hey, why did you do it that way? Or why didn't you do this instead of that? And I don't, I, I just don't go on. I mean, I can't wait till I get reproved again. I just can't wait. Till I get it's just the opposite. I, I do not like to be reproved. And uh, I don't know, maybe you like to reprove people, but I don't. I have a hard time. But what I'm saying, that will never happen again. Isn't that exciting? And if anybody could reprove us, if anybody could say bad things about us, so to speak, mm -hmm. God could. Mm -hmm. He has the perfect record. And you may have gotten by here on earth, so it seems, but you can't get by with him. He knows. And yet he still loves you. In spite of everything that he knows about you, he still loves you so much that he thought you were worth dying for. Mm -hmm. ah, so we become worthy because of Jesus. The offender is justified. Again, in Romans chapter 3, verse 24 through 26, says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation from, uh, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the uh, for forbearance of God, to deceive, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Folks, if there's any other way to go to heaven, Jesus would have been a fool to come and die on that cross. But he's not a fool. He knew there was no way that you and I could ever go to heaven within ourselves. No matter how good you might try to be, whatever, we're, we're still going to come up short. And so Jesus, he died for you. Even though if you would or wouldn't receive him, he still died for you. He gave his all. That's where we come up with his blood. He gave all of his blood, if you please, for your salvation. The offense is nullified in 1 John 1, 7. He said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Isn't that fantastic? Mm -hmm. That no matter what you've done, God can save you. That's the reason I know there's hope for our politicians for them getting saved. Amen. Uh, there's hope for anyone to trust Christ as their Savior and be forgiven of all their sins. Mm -hmm. Without blood, there's no readiness for service. And by that, I mean, in Exodus 29, 20, it says this, then shalt thou kill uh, the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Now, folks, that sounds pretty bloody, doesn't it? I mean, when you start thinking about all it said there, but when you really start looking at it, it's really exciting what it's saying. Because here's what I said, the blood on the ear, if you please, that's a picture of hearing the word of God. Isn't that neat? That when we hear that the blood can change us, but then the blood on the hand, if you please, is to handle the work of God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exciting when you think of how God's blood can help us and strengthen us to do things that we couldn't do without? Then the blood on the foot to have a walk with God. And also, if you please, walk them to share the good news that Jesus saves. In the beginning of my introduction, I wanted to share that my wife is a universal giver or donor. And uh, when we lived in Dallas, Texas, she was constantly getting calls because they wanted her blood. And that simply means that her blood can be given to anybody of any blood type. But folks, when you think about it, Jesus truly was the universal blood donor. Amen. Because his blood covers all, all together. And when I say that, uh, it leads us to a place that we call heaven because of what he was willing to do to pay for you and for me. And no doubt this has probably been the bloodiest message I've ever brought. But I'm so thankful because it's so clear that Jesus became a human sacrifice for you and for me. Amen. But he was a perfect human without sin. He again was God that was willing to become one of us so that he could save us from our awful sins. What a fantastic God that he loved you and made so much that he died for you. No matter what you do, 
If you accept what he's done for you, fantastic. That's what we want. But if you refuse it, he still died for you. Amen. Wow. I'm so thankful for the precious blood of Christ. And folks, there truly is power in that blood that's beyond anything that man could ever know or ever create in this life. I'm so thankful I'm going to heaven because of the blood of Christ. I'm so thankful as John the Baptist was able to preach and shout out to the crowds of people that came out. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And so folks, are you saved? And I trust that you are, but if you're not, and basically the word saved just means, are you saved from hell? And do you have a place saved for you in heaven? That, that's what it means. And so, are you saved? And, and here's that, you can know that you're saved. It's, hey, like a, it's a no-so religion that we have. We don't have to go through life wondering and go, wow, that was cold, I just nearly got hit, you know, or this nearly happened, or that nearly happened. Man, man, I just nearly died, and what would have happened? And it nice to hit. That as a Christian, as a believer, you go, wow, I just nearly went to heaven. <laughs> and look at things just totally different because we realize what Christ has done for us, that he's taken care of all my terrible sins because he loved me. And so you might say, well, preacher, we're all saved here. We all know Christ is Savior. And if, and if we're not saved, well, we're too young to understand, you know. But folks, that's the only way to heaven is by accepting what Jesus did for us. Amen. That he gave his all for you. Wow. I'm going to heaven because of him. Would you stand to your feet and begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time we can come together and study your word and help us to see how foolish it is for us to try to or work our way to heaven. Lord, as we started out our message about the guy in the Philippines who every year uh, has himself nailed to a cross and he's beaten as he goes to that cross and has the crowds jeering at him and so forth, just a mockery. But he feels in his heart that by being crucified every year that he's going to go to heaven. That is washing away his sins. And that's the problem. He, he's letting himself try to take care of his own sins and that's not possible. And Lord, we're so thankful that you died once upon the cross for us and that that took care of all sin from the beginning of time to the end of time. And Lord, help us to accept that wonderful gift and, and to see the power that's in that blood that you gave. That it was a special, it was a holy blood. It was blood from God the Father. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for being willing to give it in such a wonderful way. Help us, Lord, to trust you and to share this wonderful good news that this world needs to hear. This world needs to accept what you've done. And Lord, we pray that you help us to do our part to share that wonderful news. Thank you that we have good news in this dark and terrible news world. Lord, help us to be faithful to share it. We pray now to someone that has never prayed this simple childlike prayer, that they might pray it right now, that they repeat it within their heart and just say, Dear God, please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
celebrate and graduate from one school. And she's already made some commitments to the Lord. We're excited about that. And I mean, for the last seven years, she's been working good news in a very special way. And so we're thankful for her desire to please God. Y'all you know, pray for her. Appreciate her family being here and pray with her. Don't tell how many souls might get saved as a result of what's happening here right now. Isn't that exciting? some prayer at this time and again we're thankful for her graduate and we want to pray special for her and she's been very special to us and uh, she's fixed to move off the south bend so anyhow y'all pray for south bend that they'll listen to her and get saved okay <laughs> so but we do love her and uh, she definitely will be missed and i'm going to ask levi uh, to pray a special prayer for her but also Praying our dismissal prayer. And of course, we're working, trying to get everything ready to go back to the mission field here. And so y'all pray for us. Uh, our goal is to leave August the 8th. And we'll be traveling. It's still August 8th, yeah. Uh, tickets are booked, so yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> that's more than a goal, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. But you know how things have changed. We had a book before, remember? Yeah. <laughs> and the government's changed it. So anyhow, uh, but that's our... Go. Yes, sir. It sounded like you charged her to be a missionary up there in Mishawaka. Yeah, been. So, and Levi, we'll have, we'll have Levi pray for her and again, uh, pray special for her and as we dismiss and go our way. So, uh, Levi, would you please pray for us? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for loving us, Lord. Thank you for uh, this beautiful weather you've given us. And, Lord, thank you for so many that were able to make it here today, Lord, to hear the message that uh, Dad brought for us. And, Lord, just please um, be with Kayliana as she's going to be uh, facing some big uh, life changes, Lord. She's moving away from her parents. And, uh, Lord, just please put your hand on her, Lord. Help her as she makes uh, so many decisions that will be facing her here shortly, Lord. Just give her the wisdom to make the right decisions. And, Lord, just please uh, bless her as she uh, does this transition. Lord, uh, just please uh, help us today as we go throughout the day, Lord. Help us to keep you in our minds and uh, all our decisions, and uh, Lord, uh, help us to be able to make it back here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.